So in order to help us think about rotating four-dimensional spheres, we are going to use the same technique that people always use when they're thinking about higher dimensional things, and we're going to try to sympathize with a two-dimensional creature. Um, yeah, so when I say two-dimensional, I really mean it. Uh, this fish here, uh, it only has a concept of forward and backward, up and down, uh, but no idea what left or right are. Um, yeah, it's completely living in this two-dimensional universe here. Uh, if I, like, show it to you this way, you can see that it really is very, very flat. Um, this fish has never encountered anything except for two-dimensional shapes like this heptagon here. Um, and in particular, it's never encountered uh, any rotation that goes beyond two dimensions. By which I mean, um, these shapes can rotate this way, uh, but uh, this fish, let's say, has heard about three-dimensional spheres. Um, and three-dimensional shapes, including spheres, can uh, rotate in more than one way. Uh, we can rotate uh, this way, that's your pitch and roll. Uh, that's three degrees of freedom, whereas these guys, we would say, only have one degree of freedom for their orientations. So it's pretty tricky for this fish to grasp the idea of anything uh, three-dimensional, um, but we can help it by employing a light bulb. Uh, when this light bulb has the ability to shine a shadow of our globe here onto uh, this fish's like two-dimensional universe. Um, a shadow being an example of something uh, that we that we encounter in our daily lives and is a genuinely you know uh, two-dimensional thing. This fish seeing what like this stuff, uh, it just looks pretty confusing, right? It's a bunch of very very strange looking shapes uh, that we've got in this shadow, um, but we can kind of give this fish control over the orientation of this sphere. Um, with it set up in this nice way, where the fish gets like a nice view of the surface of the sphere, uh, we can give the fish the ability to grab the shadow of the sphere and move it around, and thereby rotate the sphere itself. Um, and you know, doing this, the fish actually gets complete control over the rotation of this object, uh, it can go this way, and this way, and this way. Uh, if I change it to the globe, you know, we can maybe grab, like, uh, chili over here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the fish can, uh, using this method, it can get the globe to any orientation that it likes, um, and it can explore the whole, the surface of the entire thing. Okay, so I promised you four-dimensional spheres rotating, and here we are. Uh, what we have here is, in the, sa in the same way that this is a shadow of this three-dimensional sphere, uh, this is a shadow of a four-dimensional sphere. Uh, I really mean that. Uh, sort of the computer that I've got is doing a simulation of a four-dimensional sphere, just as it's doing a simulation of a three-dimensional sphere here. Um, and just as up here, it has got a light source sitting in four dimensions, and there is light that is going through the surface of a four-dimensional sphere, uh, being blocked by certain objects on the surface of that sphere, and it's casting this three-dimensional shadow. Uh, in exactly the same way as the light that's coming through this sphere is get making this shadow. Now this may not look like much, uh, it just looks like a sort of something you'd find in a martini right now, but I can uh, make it perform some interesting four-dimensional rotations. Uh, yeah, this may look like a bunch of just sort of weird distortions, but uh, the remember you know try to sympathize with the fish again for a second like when it sees these things going on it seems pretty weird to it maybe like this weird distortions but uh yeah the for, for us we know that there's nothing distorting when the fish uh, uh when the fish changes the shadow in this way 
um, all that's happening is that this uh, sphere is rotating. And similarly, when I grab this and do some funky stuff with it, there's really nothing that's changing. Uh, all that's happening is that the sphere in four dimensions is going to a different angle, and so the light is hitting it in a different way, and so it's casting a different three-dimensional shadow. There are some very interesting things that you can get in this situation. Uh, if I grab this shadow here, and I bring it down, this sort of sphere becomes a plane, and it goes back to being a sphere. Back to a plane, back to being a sphere. Um, and we can keep doing this, and it'll keep sort of turning itself inside out. Uh, and that looks pretty strange to us three-dimensional creatures, seeing this three-dimensional shadow. Um, but uh, there's a good analogy for it up here. Uh, if we, yeah, if we have just this uh, very simple sphere here, um, just it's got two circles on it. Um, if uh, the fish uh, grabs this, uh, like, cross, uh, right now all it's got is, like, this circle, right? Um, but if we grab and move this way, the circle becomes a perfect straight line. And then if we keep going, it goes back to being a circle again. Yeah, um, yeah that's exactly the same way that we can go from a sphere to a plane to a sphere again. There's a few other textures that we've got for our four-dimensional sphere in the same way that we've got a few different textures for our three-dimensional sphere. Um, I've got this one. Uh, this is a quite interesting shape you get. Um, this is a shape that you can read about on Wikipedia called the hyperoctahedron or the 16 cell. Um, and it's kind of the four-dimensional equivalent of this sphere here, where the surface is just broken up into triangles. There's one other one I've got for you. It is uh, this rather strange and funky looking thing. Uh, this is, yeah, this rather beautiful object is called the hop vibration, and it's something that, uh, it's a shape that really doesn't have any three-dimensional equivalent. Uh, but I do recommend looking it up on Wikipedia. Like, the closest that you can get is kind of a sphere like this, or maybe a sphere like this, uh, but really it doesn't have any equivalent. It's just a very, very special thing existing in four dimensions. One of the most fascinating things for me about thinking about rotations like this is uh, going back to this fact that the fish has one degree of freedom in its rotation, uh, in three dimensions, we have three degrees of freedom in our rotations. Um, in four dimensions, you actually get six degrees of freedom in your rotations. You can, it's sort of the, uh, to fully, to show you all of them, there's this, there's uh, this, there's this, um, and then there's all of these ones. Um, and from the point of view of a four-dimensional creature, maybe, looking at our four-dimensional sphere properly, um, yeah, it's, we've just performed, we've just rotated it around every axis in four dimensions, in some sense. Um, and there's an interesting thing to think about the connection between those numbers. Again, uh, in two dimensions, you've got one degree of freedom. In three dimensions, you've got three degrees of freedom. In four dimensions, you've got six degrees of freedom. So how many do you think you have in five dimensions? Ten degrees of freedom. So it's one, three, six, ten. Uh, and by examining the jumps between those numbers, you might be able to work out how many degrees of freedom that you get in any number of dimensions. Uh, maybe post the formula in the comments if you can work it out. Um, and don't just inspect the numbers as well. Once you've worked out the formula, try and give the reason why you gain so many degrees of freedom in your orientation when you go up a dimension. So I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like it, I do have a Patreon page where you can help me out. If you sponsor me, you'll get access to a video where I explain how the code behind these things works. And uh, don't forget to like, like and subscribe, and okay, I'll see you in the next one.